Hi, this is Matt Macintosh, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can go about uh, setting up your track so that you can uh, do a flyby uh, and then start putting in additional scenery. So, I'm going to carry on from the track that I'd demonstrated in the last video. Um, before I get started, though, I'm just going to point out how you can make the track appear the right way in in uh, Unreal. So if I just right click on this, uh, go to object properties, what I want to do is turn on back face cull so I can see the direction that the polygons are actually facing. Um, if I'm in my loft, all I need to do is go to where it says flip normals and it pops it back the right way. So that means that you should be able to take it into Unreal without any issues. Okay, so first things first, what I want to do is make a, a copy of the spline uh, that goes around the track and uh, lift it up so that I can put a camera onto that. So to put a camera on there, um, go to your create tab, go to the camera option and put a free camera in the scene. So it's pointing, pointing down at the moment. What I want to do with that is just rotate it round by 90. And then what I want to do is affect its motion. So if I go to the little motion tab here and assign controller and then select this position tab, click on the assign controller button, we get a list of what options you can do with this camera. So I want to put path constraint and click on OK. Um, and what that does is it allows me to choose a path that the camera is going to move along. So you can see that it's actually facing the wrong direction. So if I click on follow and then I can tell it what direction I want the thing to go. So at the moment if I scrub through the file, uh, through the uh, timeline even, you can see that it does actually move around that track within the frames of 0 to 100. That's probably a little bit too fast. So what I do is go to the time configure um, or configuration and maybe extend it to something like 500. Click on OK. And what you'll notice is that it's not actually changed the frame uh, key. So you need to select and then drag that to the appropriate frame. So now it should go around at a much slower rate. So if I was to actually jump into what this camera was seeing by pressing C, you can actually see what's going on from that camera as it moves around the track. Now at the moment, there's not much of a, a kind of field of view. So what I want to do with this camera is just change its uh, lens type to something like 28. And you can see you get far more of that field of view now. Um, so once you've got your camera on this spline, go around your track and just think, oh, well, okay, there could be something interesting at this point. So what I'll do is I'll actually, if I can get it selected, there we go. Um, I'll actually put in an object at that point. So I'm just gonna use a sphere at the moment. Okay, so we're looking at about here then. Okay, so once I've got something like that in there, I could potentially use FFDs um, to pull points around and give it a little bit more of a random shape. Um, it's up to you whether you do this sort of process, but I personally, I won't bother with this. Um, it's, it's only if, if you're trying to get a rough shape to start off with. Um, I'd be more inclined to actually take it into um, said brush and start sculpting in there but just as an example if you're wanting to get additional information into those basic shapes then you could potentially use this process okay so i want to avoid it kind of coming into the track like this so all i'm going to do is just spin it around play around with the size of it and its scale or its position even Okay, that should that should be all right. So now what I'm going to do is just export these things out 
into uh, ZBrush so that I can then start sculpting on top of this because I've got my rough shape now what I want to do is actually start building a little bit more detail into it so I'm going to export these things out and I'm just selecting everything at once um, I can break these things apart in ZBrush so I'm not really too fussed if everything goes in one OBJ uh, and I'm going to call it environment bits so save yeah export okay so if I jump over to ZBrush now what I can do is import in those objects that I've just created as you can see I've got them in my scene now um, what I want to be doing is focusing on these two chunks here so first things first what I want to do is go to my polygroups um, well I, actually I don't need to go to my polygroups but if you wanted to separate these pieces out and they all came in the same colour um, because they're separate meshes all you need to do is click on this auto group and it would actually assign them individual colours so that you could select them and split them away like so so that you can work on that without it affecting the track okay so first things first what I want to do is just split this one off again and because we've got this topology where all these points come into one what I want to do with that is just dynamesh the thing but first I'm going to chop off the underside of the mesh so I'm just going to use my clip curve to flatten that down so that when I dynamesh I don't get all this excess uh, shape underneath so go to geometry go to where it says uh, dynamesh up to you what kind of resolution you want to use I'm just going to click on that and I end up with a, a geometry that okay it's a little bit scraggy in places but if I was to divide this I've got far more mesh to actually play with and I can make use of uh, certain brushes like the mallet brush uh, which is just here go for mallet fast and instead of having it as a stroke put it to colour spray and it's up to you whether you leave it with the square stuff uh, square alpha uh, but turn your intensity down and when you go over the top of the thing you can see that it starts to you know, make a, an effective rock formation there. So I'm just going to divide that again. So I end up with a little bit more detail into it. Okay, so because I'm going to be on the track and I'm never going to see the back part of this unless I'm just coming around that corner, I don't need to put as much kind of detail into that. So I'll just roughly go over the top like so. This stuff at the back, definitely never going to see. Okay, so now I'm going to switch over to this brush instead. Same process, so first off I'm just going to clip curve it down at the bottom. Dynamesh the thing, divide it a few times so that it smooths out a bit more, and then, yeah, again, just go over the top of it and give it that kind of appearance of rock formation. I'm only after the rough shape, I'm not after the refined details of the thing. Yeah, because you're going to get that from the texture you're not going to be creating it out of the geometry I'm just after that rough shape okay so once you've got this sort of stuff like so I'll just put the other one back in the scene for some reason it's made a copy of it um, so what I'm going to do with that is just hide it and then delete hidden modify topology and 
delete hidden. I should have got rid of it. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, yeah, what I'm going to do with these two now is um, combine them together because we've got a split there where we can retop over the top of the thing. Um, and then I'm going to look at exporting it out into 3ds Max so that it can be retopped. So first things first, I need to merge these two down. So merge down, okay. And then now one mesh. So before I can take it out, if I take this into 3ds Max or uh, Top Hogan or Silo or whatever, I want to have a lot less polygons than what I've currently got. So the best way to go about doing that is to go to Z plugin. Go to Decimation Master, pick an amount that you want it to be at. So if I wanted this to be at 44,000 poly, uh, 4, polys even, um, I'd be looking to decimate it to about 10%, which would be more than acceptable. So I'm just going to pre-process that one. And decimate current, yeah, 44,000. There we go. That's more acceptable to actually take into uh, one of your 3D packages to re topologize. Um, but as you might have noticed, there's not much of a difference in the overall shape of the thing. So, what I'm going to actually do is take it down to about 35% of 44,000. So, again, pre process and decimate current. Okay, so we can see that that did actually alter its shape a little bit, but we got something that I can work with there and we got a lot less polys to worry about. So I'm gonna export this as environment rocks. There we go. Uh, I don't need to re-export out the track because I've got the same file available. So actually, instead of going into 3ds Max, I'm just going to pop into Silo. Uh, same processes apply, I just prefer using Silo. So I'm going to load my objects into my scene. So environment bits. I'm just going to get rid of those two because we got rid of them in ZBrush. And then I'm going to load in environment rocks. And what I want to do with these is retop it so that it actually lines up with the topology on here. So in Silo, I am going to make it see through and then lock that file, uh, that object. But I'm also going to turn off its wireframe so that I'm not getting all this kind of information there. So if I click off of that, I've just got an object I can now draw on and because I can see the wireframe on this thing actually what I'll do is I'll just apply the bog standard material so it shows up better um, I can just retop this now so all I'm going to do is just start drawing on this object I'm not needing to be totally precise on what I'm drawing here. It just needs to be a kind of rough approximation, uh, but enough to pick up some of the details that's going on on that rock face. Okay, so I'll just draw a few more of these things in. one okay so because I've got all these lines going upwards I've not actually got any topology showing up because I need to make a, a line that intersects them so with this one I'm going to be a lot rougher because I don't need it to specifically line up with that topology what I do need it to do that is kind of reverse across onto this rock. So if I uh, just carry on these lines over here, I can 
make one contiguous element. Again, I just want to kind of follow some of these contours around. Okay, right next to the track. Okay, so these are kind of indicating where the upline should be. Okay, that should be enough to start off with. So I just press return and hide those rocks. We can see that when it's made it, it's kind of put the normals the wrong way. So I just want to flip them. And I just want to check if I've got any four-sided polys, which it says I've got three in here. So I just need to check where they actually are. Right, there they are. Okay, so all I want to do with this is just get rid of these you know, uh, more than four side polys. And there we go. It says they're all quads now. Um, just to test it, putting a, a division on it. That's fine. Right, okay. So because I've, I've now got um, a surface that I can work with here, what I want to start doing is extruding these edges so that they snap to the edge of the track. So all I need to do with that is... Just select that edge, extrude it, and then what I'll be looking at doing here will be snapping these points to the edge of the track. I'm not welding them, I'm just snapping them there. Um, and the reason for that is if I want to make any changes to the geometry um, it's not going to have an impact on the actual road it'll just be on this for example here I want to add in a new span so I can just add that in without it kind of affecting this this track element It's nearly there with this. I'm noticing that the lines are getting further and further away, so what I want to do is just plunk it into point there, weld them together. I'm going to flip these edges like so. And on this one, I'm just going to collapse that one there. I just want to keep quads next to the actual track. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do rather than just kind of you know, jutting out the track here, I'm just going to select all these lines down the edge and put in an additional span. With these ones, I'm just going to move them into a better position so that they are next to the track, but they're not quite as on the track. They're, uh, they give a little bit of a spacage between the track edge and the geometry that's going to uh, you know, act as a barrier. It's up to you how many points you want to kind of add between the track and the surrounding geometry. Uh, but I tend to put about two before I start collapsing edges down and stuff. So try to keep two sets of quads and then start kind of um, you know, working into the actual environmental geometry. 
Okay, so I've got some topology there. It's all quadded at the moment. I'm just going to even these things out a little bit more. And same on the bottom of here. Finally, this this last piece here. Okay, so yeah, I mean that's how you can go about kind of starting to block out the shape of your track. It's up to you how far you push these things, um, but it's a method that works in industry. And it's the one that I'm kind of demonstrating in lectures and in class. Okay, so um, yeah, that's that's the process. Just make sure you make the rest of the track. Um, thanks for listening.